As promised, we have the long-awaited video on the conductive rubber buttons for the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus. This video is going to be the first time that I've ever done a true behind-the-scenes look at some of the annoying aspects of handheld development. If you find this interesting, I can do more of these in the future. With that out of the way, let's dive into the topic of this video. As you're probably already aware, I mentioned that the RP2 Plus would be using conductive rubber buttons instead of the dome switches used in the original RP2. To this point, I've only ever used the dome switch versions of the RP2 Plus like the one you can see on screen now. After using the new rubber pads for the dome switches on the original RP2, I hoped that Retroid would make both versions available for people to buy. Unfortunately, Retroid decided to do only one version, and that version uses conductive rubber. The first thing you need to know is that Retroid has never done a product that uses conductive rubber, so there was some concern on my part that there was a higher probability of them doing a bad job versus them knocking it out of the park. It can take up to a month to manufacture a new PCB, so the good news was that there was plenty of time for them to make something decent. I learned that they would only be doing one PCB version right around the time that I made my first video on the RP2 launcher, so now we need to go over the timeline. I published my video on the launcher on October 31st. On that day, I asked Retroid when they would have a working sample that I could evaluate for people thinking about buying that device. They said the first working PCB wouldn't be done for a month, so instead I asked to evaluate the rubber pads with buttons on a blank RP2 PCB board. That prototype was estimated to be done around the middle of November. I had a few videos on the RP2 Plus plan that I haven't made, but almost all of them need the conductive rubber buttons to work, so I've just been waiting around. People would ask me about the buttons and where the button video was, and I could only say that I didn't know. A bit before the two week wait was over, I asked about the status of the buttons and I never got an answer. On November 22nd, I planned to go over bugs and feature suggestions for the RP2 Plus launcher with the engineer that made it. On a side note, the launcher is now a lot better than it was in October and I'll show off some of those improvements in another video. While I was talking to the launcher dev, I got a chance to test the first working sample of the 2 Plus conductive rubber pads. The buttons were absolute garbage. That version had two big issues. The first one was that the rubber pads felt really bad. The second problem was that the D-pad was basically unusable for anything that required precision. For example, say you were playing a fighting game that you needed to roll the D-pad. Due to the poor design of the button, it would be almost impossible to fire off combos. There's a center post on the bottom of the D-pad that allows you to pivot. If it's too short, the D-pad will bottom out and it'll press more than one button at a time. It was a bit frustrating to learn how bad the buttons were because they had a perfectly good product to learn from. In trying to persuade Retroid to abandon this bad work and start again, I emphasized that they made something that no one would be happy with. They wanted to wait another day to get an improved version to address the problems, but I warned them that this would be a waste of time and it would also push them out of their promised shipping window. Fast forward to last Friday and they had that improved sample. I got mailed two versions that they said were almost exactly the same as the rubber pads used in the RG350. That wasn't really the case and there was still the issue of the D-pad to deal with and an issue where the ABXY buttons could go under the shell when pressed. If I took the rubber pad from the RG350 and put it inside the 2 Plus, there was no issue with the feel of those buttons and it was almost impossible for them to go under the shell. When I finally got a chance to look at the rubber pads for the first time, it was clear that they did not follow the reference at all. They were happy to leave things like they were at that point to meet their deadline, but I tried one more time on Monday to get them to understand the issue and to find a solution to address it. After a lot of conversation on the mechanical structure of the D-pad and the rubber pads, they got to the point where the issue could possibly be fixed by changing either the button mold or the button mold and the rubber mold. Unfortunately, I also found out during that meeting that the first sample of the rubber pad was tested and approved on November 12th, which was 10 days before I had the chance to see if it was good or bad. Yesterday, I was mailed several samples to verify and I found a candidate that fixed the D-pad issue, but there was still the issue of the buttons going under the shell due to the wrong mechanical design of the conductor rubber pad. This could be fixed by either adding height to the rubber pad or the button itself. The height of the ABXY buttons is already decent, so they decided to add height to the conductive rubber pad. They managed to fix the final issue in the prototype that I'm using now. The D-pad isn't perfect, but it isn't as unusable like it was before. The ABXY buttons also feel much better now that they don't have the ability to go under the shell. Even though this solution is better than the one that they wanted to go with on November 22nd, Retroid kind of ran the clock and wasted valuable time that they could have used to address these issues earlier last month. Changing just these two molds will probably take until December 10th. Retroid is planning on making an announcement that the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus is delayed, but I felt like you should have a bit more information since my insistence that they make a good product is partially to blame for this delay. 
Make sure to keep an eye out on my main channel for a video on the RP2 Plus tomorrow. Talk to you out.